While the Mauser Gewehr 98 was an excellent infantry rifle, it was simply too long for the mud and blood of the trenches. The rifle got in the way. That's why the Germans went to large numbers of the Model 98A. When the Gewehr 98 infantry rifle was adopted for the German army, at the same time, it was too long for any use by cavalry, artillery, support troops, etc. So along with what had been standard practice for years, the long rifle goes to the infantry and you have to have a corresponding carbine for your mounted troops and artillery troops. They naturally began by chopping off the front end of a Gewehr 98. Mind you, the, the Germans had already adopted as a standard infantry cartridge this new, this new Schwer heavy bullet, which in the little carbine with a 17-inch barrel produced a, an atomic muzzle blast. And the recoil was stupendous. And the cavalry and the artillery people said, let's try again. In 1908, the German military began receiving shipments of a new carbine, a shortened version of the Gewehr 98. This gun would go on to be produced literally in the hundreds of thousands. Over a million of them were produced by the end of, of the Great War in 1918. The, uh, the designation is often confused amongst writers, historians, collectors as the, uh, the 98A. Uh, to uh, differentiate it from its World War II kissing cousin, the 98K, uh, stands for carabine, or carbine as we would call it. The, the actual true designation is the 98AZ, or AZ. It's called the 98AZ uh, because it had provision for a bayonet lug as well as a stacking swivel. Uh, a lot of the cavalry carbines of this era they, they didn't have either one. Uh, what's the sense of putting a bayonet on a cavalry carbine for a guy that's gonna be on a horse? When the Germans adopted the Gewehr 98, typically infantry rifles had long barrels, over 29 inches for the Gewehr 98. But cavalry troops, artillerymen, people like that did not need a full-length infantry rifle. And with the 98AZ, what they really came up with was a short rifle. It does not use the large ring receiver of the Gewehr 98, it uses a small ring receiver. And it has a 23.6 inch barrel uh, that is a lighter contour barrel than the full infantry rifle. So they decided to go ahead and run the handguard all the way out. And the 98A, really came into its own. Uh, instead of just being a minor collector variant uh, that people want to have, uh, it became one of the principal battle rifles of the German army uh, late in the Great War. These guns were manufactured at factories at Erfurt, Spandau, Danzig, and Amberg uh, throughout the war. In fact, by the end of the war, they represented 65% of the total production of all rifles in Germany and uh, were outnumbering the Gewehr 98s for manufacture. To make it more compact, to make it more appropriate for use by cavalry, the Germans also take the straight, the rather characteristic straight bolt handle of the G98 series. They bend the bolt handle around and then carve a recess in the wooden stock around it. And this is something that is beginning to look a lot like what will be the next evolution of Mauser carbine in the form of the K98K, the rifle that Germany fights with in the Second World War. The 98AZ uh, continued life after the First World War, and you will find a number of them overstamped with a 1920 uh, mark on the uh, breech. And this signifies that this gun was one of the 100,000 carbines uh, that the German army was allowed to retain uh, by the stipulations of the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, the Gewehr 98 is a long infantry ri uh, rifle, uh, was not allowed uh, in Weimar Germany after the war. The, uh, the carbine was allowed, 
And so uh, if you find one with a 1920 over stamp, you know you're looking at one of the 100,000 guns that were officially sanctioned uh, by the Allies as per the uh, Treaty of Versailles.